Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Cordes. I'm the District Superintendent for the Muroc Joint Unified School District and welcome to our Mondays with Muroc. We'd like to welcome those families that are new to the district this year and just to inform you, this is something that we do every week on Mondays. We'll release a short video. Usually you'll see me. Um, occasionally you'll see Assistant Superintendent Trevor Walker or perhaps Assistant Superintendent Brent Tan. Um, but this is something that we use in addition to what sites put out just to get some information out to families. Uh, first and foremost, just want to talk about emergencies at schools. So we have school, um, you know, Monday through Friday. We have almost 2,000 students that attend with us and they attend for 180 days. That means there are a lot of opportunities for someone to fall off the monkey bars and maybe break a collarbone or to have um, an allergic to reaction to something or any number of health issues that are beyond what our district nurses do or our health aides can handle. Um, we always contact parents in any of those type of situations, but sometimes we also have to call emergency services to come and help us. Um, when that happens, please know that we are going to take care of the emergency first and foremost. And what we've seen in the past is some, somebody will hear that there's an ambulance at a school and then the phones start to go um, off the hook. A lot of people are calling in to find out what is happening. We don't, I just want to make sure I explain this clearly. We're not ignoring anybody. If you're calling about something like that and you're not getting someone to pick up the phone, it's not that we're ignoring the phone call, it's that we're dealing with the problem at the moment. Um, I would ask that you just wait if you could, because if it is your child, you would be the very first person that we're contacting after emergency services, and we would call you immediately to let you know. So if it's your child, you will find out. Um, other than that, we're going to take care of the emergency first, and then we can get back to answering phone calls. Um, also, just, just to, as a reminder... Just because emergency services are on a school campus does not necessarily mean that there is an emergency. We have the fire department come through sometimes and we let some of the younger students go up and see the fire trucks or the ambulance. Um, sometimes we'll have police on site or emergency services to walk the campuses so they can learn um, the layout of the campuses and make sure everyone understands where everything is so that in the event of an emergency, they know how to get to different places. So we, we appreciate your support and your help in those areas. Uh, thank you for everyone for your patience and understanding on Monday with Tropical Storm Hillary. As it came through, we were monitoring that very closely, um, driving the roads, looking at the different bus routes, looking at our school buildings, watching the news to see about outlying areas. We have a number of staff and families that do not live in the boundaries of the district. Uh, they travel in and so looking to see what the road conditions look like coordinating with edwards air force base i want to want to express our appreciation um, for all the assistance that they gave they have a meteorological department that um, rivals anything and it was amazing to be able to have that type of support to to forecast ahead and we made the decision to close school um, as soon as we knew that we had a decision that we could make in, in that regard, if that makes sense. Didn't want to make it too early. Didn't want to drag it out into the wee hours of the night, though, either. So thank you for your understanding there. Uh, it's the beginning of the school year. Uh, really important time, if you, even if you've been here for several years, to ensure that your contact information is up to date. So in the event of one of those emergencies that may include your child or... Um, sending out messages to families. We want to make sure that we send those out to the accurate numbers and addresses. So ensuring that we have your right cell phone numbers, um, email addresses, things of that nature, please make sure that we have that information. Uh, drop off and pick up. Uh, just a, a friendly reminder that we have a lot of little people and little people also don't necessarily always understand how vehicles work, how big they are, how tall we sit in them, and how hard it can be to see them. Um, so just a, a reminder that we need to make sure we're using crosswalks and not crossing across the street wherever it's more, more convenient perhaps, but crossing where it is safest, um, driving the appropriate speed limit uh, around schools. It's a 25 mile an hour zone. I think 15 is a great speed limit. 
to be honest, uh, to ensure that everyone is safe and sound. And that's also important to remember after we drop our child off. Uh, seems to be a bit of a pattern over the years where we'll see somebody come in nice and slow, drop off their child, and then kind of race out of the parking lot to go on to the next part of their day. We want to make sure that around the school zones we're being extra special and cautious. Uh, another thing uh, related to filling out forms and keeping uh, information up to date is our free and reduced applications. So in California, um, all students get to eat for free every day. That is by law. So any student can come in and get free meals. That's easy. But districts still, in order to get reimbursed for free and reduced lunch students, those who qualify, we need to have that application filled out. So what I'd like to ask everyone is join with me. I'm going to fill one out and I would like to ask you to fill one out as well. And please have your child return that to the school and remind them that they can always come and get a delicious, hot, free meal at the school. Um, in addition to that, this year we're moving to a card system with food service. So students will have a, a card for elementary students. Those will live at the school site for sure. And they'll go with their teacher and they'll be able to scan those. It'll come with a four digit pin that is unique to them. Um, something that would pretty much any child could memorize a, a nice four digit pin. While we're in transition and starting up the year and bringing that online, I just ask for your patience um, as we kind of work the bugs out in that new system. Um, any concerns that you have, um, especially for new parents, just to explain how I like to do things. Um, if you have a concern with your child at school, we want to know about it. Uh, your first line of defense most times is going to be the teacher. Um, so if there's an issue going on in a class, um, whatever the issue is, whether it's a social issue like um, problems with, with peers or it's a homework issue or an understanding issue or a school rule issue, um, try reaching out to the teacher first. Um, if it can't be resolved there or if it's not the appropriate place for some reason, then I would ask that you then go to the site principal and bring up your concern there. And by all means, if that doesn't work, you can always reach out to me. My cell phone number is 760-250-3210. I would just ask that you use it um, after you have gone through those other steps first. Um, but feel free to reach out to me. I've given my cell phone number out for years. Um, very rarely has anyone ever misused that or abused that. Um, so if you need to get a hold of me, that's how you can do that. Or you can call the district office um, and talk with Sandra. Um, she's my executive secretary and set us up an appointment if you'd like to meet in person. And the last thing I wanted to talk about today, start of a new school year, it's always nice to have a fresh, clean start. Um, we want to make sure that all students have a successful day at school. That's academically, that's socially, that's in every way. Um, but kids are kids, and we know that sometimes um, students have a difficult time at school. Um, sometimes it has to do with bullying or peer pressure or anything of that nature. Well, over these last several years now, social media has really come to light as one of the biggest areas where students can be bullied um, and have issues at school. I would just encourage you to talk with your child regularly um, learn and know what social media platforms they're using, um, monitor their use, um, and, and talk with them openly and honestly. Uh, we can help in scenarios where the um, social media is being used and it ties back into the education program and it's impacting them at school. Um, but that's really kind of where that ends. It's This is really a if it's uh, on site, if it's happening at school, absolutely, we're going to join in with you to help. But over the years, I have seen an increasing amount of parents who are very frustrated and completely understand that they want us to kind of work on student behaviors, say, over the summer. And they have a social media issue going back and forth, and they would like for us to inject ourselves into that. Um, if, it's, if it's happening at school, we can, we can definitely help. But if it's outside of that, that's really, that's a... Uh, a parental issue and we would encourage you to work with your child and the other families that are involved to resolve those concerns. Um, with that, 
just want to say thank you again to everyone. We wish you the greatest school year. Our sports teams at the high schools have taken off. The kids are just doing amazing things. It's great to see kids on our campuses smiling and happy and laughing. Um, classrooms are, are firing now. Everybody's learning, and it's an exciting time. Thank you for all that you do. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.